you in peace uh, this morning from God our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, man, I envisioned this morning, I was sitting out in, in the, um, at Bethlehem Cemetery, such a beautiful place, and just to tell everybody, you know, God created all of this. And, and then look at one another. God created you, and he said, you know, created all of us, and he said, uh, it is good. And then it went not so good. And God came to us, folks. God came for us on a, on a rescue mission because we needed a saving. There's no greater image of a battlefield analogy than that. Because we're in a battle. We're in a war. Onward, Christian soldiers. Christ saved us. That's very humbling. Because we needed saving. And then his, his presence, I mean, the Holy Spirit, he continues to that, that echo those, those words, the, the Christ's life encouraging us on our way today with, with words of hope and, of, uh, and guidance for the living of our days and on into eternity. It's Holy Trinity Sunday. And we stand, I stand in awe of God's mystery. God's mystery, folks. He's bigger than you and I can imagine. It's a God I've come to worship. God's mystery, God's majesty, God's mercy, and the mission that he's called us into. Any soldier on, on a battlefield, will, will, if, if, an, if an officer comes up and says, what is your mission? They better be able to say it. Same for Christians. Why are we here? What's it about? Followers of Jesus. Under his command. Servant love, folks. Living for something greater than oneself. Duty, obedience, compassion, caring. God-like qualities that mark this weekend. This weekend, you know, it not only marks the, the unofficial beginning of summer. I mean, it's a great time to work um, in, in your yard. Uh, to plant those vegetables, uh, plants that you probably purchased last uh, week or so, and uh, maybe as <laughs> when the sun comes out this afternoon, going on a picnic with family, with friends. But I tell you, this is also a time that we set aside to remember those who gave their lives serving our nation during times of war. We also take this opportunity uh, today to, to thank those who are serving and to thank those who have served in our military because I'll tell you, you can never say thank you enough. But what I want you to know is that you and we have other holidays to help us honor those other special people. Armed Services Day is the day that we will remember those currently serving. We set a day aside there. Veterans Day in, in, in November, we will remember those who have served our nation. Memorial Day, folks, is something else. It is a special day. It is a day for us to remember those who died while serving. And I got to tell you, there, there's another group. There's another group of military heroes and uh, families that we, we need to remember on this Memorial Day, I believe, who are, who are often overlooked. And that is those who are missing in action. Those who were, are imprisoned. And I know... 
while the official day for this is the POW MIA Recognition Day, the third Friday of every September. Did you know that? Because I think we've pretty much forgotten that. But I want you to know this is very personal for me. Because I know that. The third Friday of every September. MIA POW Recognition Day. Because I believe that group we need to remember today. Because while some may still be listed as missing in action that they were never found. They gave their lives. In prison camps, they gave their lives for this country. And they are heroes. I had a college classmate whose uh, older brother is such a person. His brother was serving in the Air Force during uh, the Vietnam War and uh, when his plane was shot down uh, in Laos. On May 30th, folks, 1968, three days from now, 50 years ago, They never found him. They don't know if he was captured, if he died in the crash. Let me tell you, for my friend's family, and for many families like his, I just, I just need you to know there's little closure when there's no body to hold on to and there is no grave to visit. We need to remember those families uh, today. And I, I need to uh, pray for that Smith family as they continue to try and to find some resolution to this situation. Fifty years in the making. Today is a day to remember. And so I I want you, I I want to take a look, an actual look at that, uh, at that word for a moment, remember. Well, the definition that you and I work off of is that to remember is to think of someone or to think of something from the past, to just think about it, or to keep information in our mind. That's what it means to remember. But I want you and I to think about that word in a slightly different way this morning. Re-member. Re-re-member. The word remember means to reattach, to reconnect to something. Not just in thought, but engaged, engagement. When people say, remember me, they aren't just asking us to think about them. They're asking us to reconnect with them. them as a person, what they stood for, what, what their lives meant, that, that, that you'd reconnect. When those who served and, and died for our nation say from their graves, folks, from, from their resting places, wherever they might be, when those who served and died for our nation say, remember me, remember me, They're asking us to live with the same conviction, the same sense of selflessness and sacrifice that they did. They got called up and they served. They want us to remember that. 
that value, that character. This Memorial Day weekend, I got to tell you, we need to do more than just think about those who have, who have gone before us. To, to just kind of give them a nod, a salute. Although I have to say that's a great place to start. Just to remember, it's a great place to start. But if we really want to honor them and re-member them, then we need to be willing to embrace and live out the values that we have seen in them. Are you and I willing to live for a purpose larger than just ourselves? When we look around at our nation and world and see injustice or people in need, are we willing to set aside our own wants, our own needs, and help serve others? I mean, that's at the heart of the mission that they step forth to serve. This weekend needs to be more than just a time to reflect on those who have have died for the cause of freedom and justice around the world. It's got to last longer than a moment. We need to re-dash member them, which means connecting ourselves to the values of their lives and finding ways to follow their example. We live in a me-first generation, in a me-first world. We send others off to fight while we stay home and garner in the benefits That sense of service. That sense of living for a purpose larger than just ourselves. But I'll tell you, friends, it's not just those who died in service of the country who are asking us to uh, remember them. So is Jesus. Jesus says the same thing. On the most important and difficult day, night of Jesus' life, Jesus asks his disciples to remember him. I mean, this wasn't just a casual request on the part of Jesus who wanted his followers to to, to think about him in the days to come to give him some some fleeting thought. No, he... This was a request Jesus made and he continues to make to his church, to us, over and over and over again for us to be connected to him and what he was about. His life. What he stood for. Because he's our boss. He's the one we follow. Jesus asked us to remember him. To remember him. Remember me. That night that he presided at that last Passover meal that he shared with his disciples on that night before he was crucified. It's part of what we know as, as, as the Last Supper. Do this in remembrance of me. The scriptures record him as saying, do this in remembrance of me. Or another way to say this is, when you do this, remember me. But Jesus didn't just want his friends to think about him and, that, and, and all he was willing to do for them and say, hey, thanks, Jesus, Thanks, man. Good job. Now, Jesus wanted them to follow him. Jesus wanted his disciples to live the way 
that he lived. To love the way that he loved, folks, and to act the way he acted. I mean, that is true remembrance. And that's what Jesus wanted then and what he still wants today. And thus we commit ourselves. I mean, we, we commit ourselves to, to once again live the way that Jesus lived, to love the way he loved. We forgive. We're called to forgive, and we forgive because Jesus forgave us. How do you apply that to your life? We serve because Jesus served us. How do we apply that to our everyday lives, in our families, in our workplaces, in our church, in our community. We worship and pray. We commit ourselves to that. We commit ourselves to worship and praying because Jesus worshiped and prayed. We love others more than ourselves because Jesus loved us more than himself. And that's that's why, which is why he, he was willing to sacrifice for us. The calling, the mission that we have been called into, folks, is profound. When people on the outside say to, to church members, why do you do what you do? Why is it important to, to be a Christian, to follow Jesus? What do we say? Because we're called to have a statement. Just as any soldier does. I find that profound. I find that moving. I find that inspiring. And discomforting. This weekend, folks, this weekend is a time when many are saying to us, when many are calling to you and calling to me, remember me. Those who have served our country and given the ultimate sacrifice of their lives are calling us to remember them in ways that embrace a spirit of selflessness and sacrifice. They're saying, remember me. Jesus is asking us to remember him in ways that fully embrace his life of service, sacrifice, and love. He calls out to you. He says, remember me. And may we truly remember and reconnect ourselves to the values of sacrifice and service seen in so many others. Parents, folks, who are no longer, who are with the Lord right now. Calling back to us from their resting places. Remember me. I remember my mom. My grandparents. I remember my father-in-law. The values that they had, that they passed on to me. They're yelling, it's Tom, remember me. I remember my three-and-a-half-month-old nephew, Brandon, died of crib death so young. I'll never... The fragility of life, folks, that every day matters, every day is a gift. I believe that because of Brandon. And I try to live my life that way, and he, from, from his grave, he calls out, Remember me, Tom. Remember me, Uncle. And Jesus, folks, may we live in ways that show the world the love, the grace, the power of God. My gosh, this is more than, a, than a, just a nod, a, 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 a little salute, and let's go on on our way. No. But folks, I just want to let 
please don't be afraid also to cry out to Jesus with those same words from yourself. Jesus, remember me. Because what I'm being asked to do and be is hard, and I can't do it by myself to forgive others. I can't do that at times. But Lord, with your power, I can to serve others, to see others, and not judge and, and, and condemn. Jesus, to see others through your eyes, I can't do it on my own. But let your spirit change me. And so we cry out, Jesus, remember me. Reconnect with me that I might be what you want. Remember us in your church. Reconnect with us here, Lord, that we might be all that you want us to be. And uh, remember us as a nation. My, Almighty God, reconnect with us as a nation to have your heart because we're in a battle right now for our very souls. You have blessed us, Lord, to be a blessing. So what I ask of you in the next couple days, folks, is this. As I ask you to take time on this Memorial Day weekend to reflect and to give thanks for those who gave their lives in service to our nation and to say thank you, to be humbled and grateful. I ask this weekend if you might decide as a family, if you might decide as a family how you can sacrifice for, how you can serve those in need in our community, our nation, and our world. Put some flesh onto what this weekend is all about. I ask you to identify three specific areas where Jesus wants you to be reconnected to him, to forgive as he forgave, to care to see others as he would see others, to worship and pray, whatever. And what changes do you need to make to truly remember Jesus? Folks, to remember Jesus in those areas. And finally, read Psalm 25, read Psalm 106, write it down. Psalm 25, Psalm 106. In what specific ways do you want God to remember you? Psalm 25 is, is the psalmist just saying, God, here's my situation, remember me. Connect with me, Lord, help me. Psalm 106 is where the nation cries out, God, reconnect with us. May we be what you created us to be. Remember me. Amen.